Hello and welcome back to All The Mod 6 here at the Wilder Solutions Startup. Now I'm Wilder, and if you'd like to join me you can find the All The Mod 6 link in the description below. Now last time we set up this automatic farm, generating vast amounts of materials with diamonds, osmium, iron, redstone, and coal. Now between last time and now, I've added the coal seeds, filling them up finely, half of the redstone and half the iron. I got a second diamond seed, and I also added a gold seed, which I forgot to do last time. Now these continue to run swimmingly, and I have more materials than I could know what to do with. The other thing I changed was to add this sludge refiner. Initially I had the sludge, which is a uh, byproduct of the plant gatherer, going into a fluid trash can and just being deleted. However, putting it into this actually creates some base raw materials like clay and gravel, which can be great for building as well as just many of the machines I intend to create in future. But regardless, there's that. I also added another set of windmills just to increase the amount of power in preparation for the machines I intended to create. Now, sadly, I already recorded doing so, but the footage was corrupted, so all of these machines I've already built, and I guess it's just up to me to show you how they work. Uh, the other thing is that these machines really have made a tight space. I really need to expand. I need a home, which is what these machines were actually created for. These set up ore times three. So if I take a piece of iron, for instance, and place that in the purification chamber, this will ch turn it into three iron clumps. These then get turned into dirty iron dust, which then becomes iron dust and is then turned into iron ingots. Oh, whoops, I left the ejection off. There we go. Now it'll run and turn into iron ingots. So this is fantastic. This triples ores and is done so with the crusher and purification chamber. Now, to make all of these is fairly simple. The purification chamber just takes another enrichment chamber, as well as advanced control circuits, osmium, and infused alloy. And advanced control circuits are just basic control circuits and infused alloys. That's fairly simple. The crusher is made with lava buckets, which are fairly simple, as well as basic control circuits, yada yada. The last thing is the electrolytic separator, which separates into oxygen and hydrogen uh, when you give it water. This is made with an electrolytic core, infused alloys, iron, and redstone. An electrolytic core takes osmium dust, gold dust, and iron dust. All very simple things. There's some other bits and pieces, like this chemical tank, which is also simple. Um, but ultimately, I don't want to run through it again after already going through the process of making them. So I'll just leave this as it is. With this done, though, it's time to actually get into what I intended to do with the episode. Um, but I guess I can show you the rest of what it takes. Coming down here, this is the electrolytic separator. It's producing hydrogen for me. And if I dig out here, you can see that this is the tank that's actually putting water in here. It's an electric pump. All it does is I have an infinite water source and when supplied with power, it will draw it up. This outputs oxygen to the right and hydrogen to the left. Oxygen filters up into the purification chamber, which it uses to actually smelt ores or, well, turn them into the clumps. Uh, all that said, it, it's a fairly simple process. It just involves making the machines. With that all said, I think it's time to get into the actual, well, my actual plan for arming myself. Now, doing this requires me to make an osmium compressor. This is made with steel casing, as well as two advanced control circuits, four infused alloy, and two buckets. Now, the way this osmium compressor works is it creates advanced alloys out of refined obsidian dust. Now, to make that, first of all, Go into the enrichment chamber, place obsidian. This will turn it into obsidian dust. With the obsidian dust in hand, take an equal amount of diamond dust and crush it. Apologies, an equal amount of diamonds and crush them into diamond dust. With the obsidian dust and diamond dust in hand, place them in the metallurgic infuser at a one for one and they will give you res refined obsidian dust. Now when you place refined obsidian dust and osmium in the, in, os in the osmium compressor, it will turn it into refined obsidian. 
This is effectively a really advanced alloy, which is what I'm going to be using to make the armor I intend to wear. While that refined obsidian processed, I also made the materials for my next pieces. Now before I can create that, I also want to make some bronze dust here just so that I can make some bronze ingots while I create them. Now the first of these is the free runners. These are made with energy tablets, infused alloys, and basic control circuits. Two energy tablets. Ah, and there we are, free runners. Now the next thing I want to make is the jetpack. This is made with tin, steel ingots, basic control circuits, and a chemical tank. There we are, jetpack. Now the thing is, I'm not going to leave it just as this. With the bronze in hand, as well as a steel block, I can make an armored jetpack. This is effectively a really powerful chest plate. It's about 50% better than a diamond chest plate, if I'm correct. But before I can use these, I have to actually fill them up. The armored jetpack runs on hydrogen, so if I place it in this tank, it will begin drawing from the tank to fill up the jetpack. The free runners, on the other hand, run on energy, so if I place them in this cube, I'll let them fill up and then I'll come back and show you how they work. So place them on here. You can see that I have actually more than a full set of diamond armors worth of armor. I also have an effective jetpack. Now the free runners work by letting you fall without taking damage. So if I fly up to a height here and drop, you'll see that at the expense of power, they've actually protected me from the landing. Now the other bonus of the free runners is that they let me walk up one block solid things as though they were stairs. A really convenient thing. Now the other benefit of these, besides their functionality, is the ability to customize how they're used. Based off a keybind you set, you can change the mode that the jetpack uses. For instance, pressing it once will shift for me to hover mode. This effectively gives me creative mode flight. It's much slower than the regular mode, but it allows me to maintain my vertical height without having to move. You can also entirely disable the jetpack, which causes you to fall. Thankfully, the free runners break my landing. Now that the last thing I want to handle is tools as well as weaponry. However, to do that requires several things. First of all, the keenly observant of you may have noticed the netherite pickaxe, which I obtained between episodes as a way of mining this ore, one of the rarest ores in this mod pack, which can only be found in ocean biomes. Suffice to say I would be remiss not to show you where I found it. So, traveling a little bit east of my base is where I've begun excavating underneath the ocean. Now, I actually really lucked out. At first I thought it would take me a long time to find this, and it sort of did. However, I actually found it in one of my branching tunnels rather than any actual main excavation. I dug off this way and then created two axis tunnels to the left and right. Uh, you'll see soon enough. Essentially what I wanted to do... Ah, here we are. Now we're in the center. So what I did is I stretched a mine out to here and up to here, effectively covering the entirety of the ocean, and then all I would do is mine left and right in lines to the east and... well, I'll just show you. So standing here, I would mine like this, a tunnel out, and then two blocks over, I'd mine another one. This effectively makes it so that there's no block I do not see. And while this can be found from 5 to 45, I figured that mining on 11 would be the best. That way I'd also get any other materials. For those of you left wondering why I didn't mine all the ore in that mine, it's actually just because of something I have planned in the future, which would make that a little redundant. Nevertheless, I'll show you the next part. Mining this takes a netherite pickaxe. And to do that, I dug down into the nether on the nether floor, around Y11 or Y14. Ah, here we are. Now, as you know, the hammer only digs out a 3x3, but this pickaxe was a diamond pickaxe that had the indestructible and teleportation property on it. So all I had to do was make use of another mod in this pack. By holding the tilde key and pointing at the nether rack, it'll mine out an area like so. Now, this takes a lot of hunger. If I only mine out, let's say, like this, you'll very quickly see that I become... Oh, well... 
<laughs> well, there you go. What a perfect demonstration of what I did. But as you can see, mining with the vein miner actually takes a lot of hunger. It's a good thing I have access to an almost infinite food source because of all those berries. Nevertheless, this is all I did to obtain the, well, the small amount of ancient debris that I needed. With this all covered, I can finally show you what I intend to use this Aldamadium ore for, and then, well, you'll see. You'll see. <laughs> Just wait. Ah, and here we are, another perfect demonstration of the power of this purification chamber. This is the rarest ore in the game, or among one of them. This triples that, making it, well, three times less uncommon to an extent. And there we are, three Aldamadium ingots from that one ore, demonstrating the effectiveness of this ore triplication system. Now, what I'm going to do is turn this into Aldamadium nuggets, because I'm going to be making use of a mod called Mining Gadgets. With a blank upgrade module made with the Aldamadium ingots, diamonds, glass, lapis, and redstone blocks. Ah, there we are. Now I can make the Mining Gadget. There's another rare ore in this game, not all that unlike all the modium, referred to as Vibranium Ore. Now this can only be found in Crimson or Warped Forests above Y107 and below Y113. Now I've dug a massive series of tunnels here, stretching from 107 to 113, because it was a much smaller gap than that of the all the modium, so I figured I would cover all of it. Now in so doing, I already found one piece. Now sadly, the reason I needed this tool was just to mine this. I need it for no other reason, as the pickaxe cannot mine it, but this can. Very, very slowly. And there we are, vibranium ore. Now I can finally begin the last part of my plan. Now what I'm planning requires a new component, which is made of diamond dust and infused alloys. This is referred to as the Reinforced Alloy. Two of these Reinforced Alloys, in tandem with the Advanced Control Circuit, creates an Elite Control Circuit, also something I need. One of the last components is made with a Reinforced Alloy, as well as Refined Obsidian Dust. This is referred to as the Atomic Alloy. The last component requires the Elite Control Circuit and the Atomic Alloys. This is referred to as the Ultimate Control Circuit. With these ingredients, I can now finally create the crux of this episode, the Atomic Disassembler. With this in hand, I now have the near ultimate tool of this mod. And I can show you how it works. Now, first of all, if you hold shift and scroll, it will swap between the modes. You can also hold N and cycle through them. Now, each of them have their own properties. The normal mode is a digging tool, and mines fairly quickly, especially with dirt and other such materials. The next mode is slow, for more precise mining, especially with things that take probably a little bit more time. It also takes less energy than the normal next mode. mode. The next mode is fast, which digs incredibly quickly. I'll demonstrate this with a block of obsidian, which it mines almost instantly, or near enough. The last are Vein and Extended Vein, which require me to show you in a different climate. I return once again to the Netherite Mine. Now, the Vein mode allows you to mine like this, and it will break every connected block of the same type. The last type, Extended Vein, allows you to do so with more blocks, meaning that I can do the same thing I did with the Vein Miner before, except with Netherrack and it will mine it almost instantaneously. Now, I'm not sure of the relative redundancy of this. If I switch it to slow and do the same vein, it will run at the exact same, slightly slower, but take less energy, all at the expense of food. I suppose that there's ups and downs to each side, depending on how much food I have, but regardless, it is something to be aware of. The last effect of this tool requires me to travel a little further south, to the place that actually convinced me to make all of this equipment. I died several times in this nether fortress, but this tool acts as a really effective weapon, capable of one-hitting most creatures. With all the mining and general clutter I have to do, I figure 
I would I had better show you how to make these backpacks. Now I already had this one, but the small backpack is just made with string, leather, and wool. And then to upgrade it is the same process. Here you go, this, and then this. Suddenly I have both of these, which give me just insane amounts of storage. And the best part is I can put them in this backpack. Now I feel like at some point I'm gonna rip a hole in open in space time or something by doing this, you know, like infinite density or whatever. Uh, but up until that point, I'm perfectly happy to have, you know, several times the amount of inventory space. Now I mentioned using this for mining, but I'm actually gonna be using it for something else. While looking out, there was actually several dungeons I found. There's one here, one further this way, and also one in the nether. I don't want to make a habit of of doing this, but I've I've just I've gone through so many people already. I feel like now that I finally have tools to do it with, it makes more sense. I actually got these in the nether. I thought these were actually really sweet, and unlike the shields, they're actually banners. So again, I don't want to make a habit of destroying villages and leaving nothing behind but also <laughs> i do enjoy all that it gets me so we'll just we'll just keep this between us all right so yeah i'm gonna go do that and come back and then celebrate my victory like scrooge mcduck by swimming around and uh, all my money so there you go uh one moment i return from the three dungeons i conquered with all the loot that they bear However, upon my arrival, I discovered a very distinct problem. This farm is actually much more efficient than I thought it was, and this was only with the one seeds. In fact, if I go inside here, this chest had completely filled. I had to scrap everything and turn it into their base components, so that's why I have these 54 iron blocks and just insane amounts of redstone, because it was producing at a point where it actually began destroying seeds. That redundancy system I set up caused it so that once this inventory was filled, it was throwing the seeds down here and into the trash can, so I actually lost the gold seeds and one of my iron seeds. Uh, this wasn't a problem though because I had so much essence and so many of the individual resource essences that I was able to just make those seeds once again uh, and actually completely fill out the farm, and now it's even more ridiculous. I've left this running for very little time at all, and it's already beginning to fill up this diamond chest. Uh, so I've had to begin upgrading the gold chest to diamonds. I'll probably do that here next, here and here, so on, just to give me more space for all the ore that I'll be refining. Besides that, I guess I can show off all the loot I got from the dungeons. I have strange trees, armor, of course, enchanted. These two backpacks I brought with me allowed me to actually hold a lot more, which meant I didn't have to get rid of a lot of things, which is both good and bad. It means that I have everything from the dungeon, but it also means that I have just a lot more to sort through, which I haven't as of yet. There's like stone bricks in all these chests, so on and so forth. But many of them have enchants that are actually really useful, uh, particularly things like indestructible, auto smelt is always nice. Uh, various armor enchants that I don't know what they mean. So I think my general plan is to sort through this all and eventually ponder out which of the enchantments I'd like to keep. Like teleportation is really fun, so keeping that for sure. And then using them, I'll find some way of taking them off of these items and, and putting them on tools that I actually want to keep and then maybe scrapping or burning them down at their base components because I'm certain I can turn like an iron helmet into five iron or something. Uh, other way, I have more banners from my fallen companions who I've uh, gently uh, slaughtered, I suppose. I really need a place to store these, I guess, like some sort of war room. Either way, I, I really need to sort through all these and figure it out. But besides that, I've completed everything I intended to do. While I would like to deal with the fact that I have no room for anything, I'd like to never have a backlog again with this chest so that there's no issues, and I want to be able to store infinite things. I also want to get major mining up and so on and so forth. But the biggest issue is the fact that I'm still sleeping in this tiny shack, and it's not even able to store me anymore. Like, the fact I have to sleep up on this little rafter just isn't going to cut it. So I think next episode I'm going to figure out housing and other such things. Um... But regardless, I've completed all I intended to do, kitted out to the nines with everything that Mechanism has to offer as of yet. I'm now ready to begin constructing everything that I intend to do to build up the Wilder Systems compound. Until then, I've been Wilder, and I will see you later.